All right. Let's do another one of these. I don't really have a name for them just yet. Um, I guess we'll, t we'll just call it the corner on the couch. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm Trevor. And I occasionally review movies and comics. Um, really, I just kind of throw on the camera whenever I feel like it. And I review whatever I feel like. So there is no schedule. And I always take requests. I love to talk about things. So I threw up a suggestion on my Facebook. And I got a couple of people saying they want me to talk about, of all things, Hocus Pocus 2. Uh, my fiance and I, we go to the movies a lot. We watch a lot of movies on streaming. And in the month of September, we saw a couple of movies. We saw X, we saw Pearl, we saw Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. And we also caught um, Hocus Pocus 2. Uh, real quick, if you love horror movies, go see X and Pearl. They're really good. Like, no joke, they're probably two of the best movies we've seen this year. And... Like it's it's good stuff, man. If you if you like well written, great horror, like psychological, bloody, just outside the box kind of thinking, those two are gonna be great. And we're we're definitely looking forward to Maxine with three X's. Whoa. Okay. So uh if you're not aware, if you're not someone that knows Elizabeth and I, we are big Disney people, and Elizabeth, my fiance, she is like a ride or die fan of Hocus Pocus. Like she loves Hocus Pocus to death. She has palettes of makeup, she has earrings, um she quotes it all the time. Like she's a very big fan of Hocus Pocus. I like the movie. I think it's fine. You know, it's a good movie. It's it's really funny. It's imaginative. It's got great characters. There's some really nice special effects work and makeup work um, on Doug Jones, who plays um, uh, Billy Butcherson. You know, and if you're if you're someone who follows sci-fi, someone who follows um, makeup and and uh, people who are in that field like doug jones is a rock star like he's he is one of the best people to put on makeup anyway um so hocus pocus 2 i never thought they'd make a sequel um elizabeth read the novel she really didn't like it um i'm sure she could tell you about it herself one day uh i i don't know i, I just thought it'd be fine so we we watched the movie the other day and we've heard some pretty middling things, like not as bad as Rob Zombie's The Munsters, which, holy crap, that sounds bad, dude. Like, really bad. But, like, we've heard, you know, middling, kind of, it's okay, it's alright, not great. So, we were kind of walking into this with open eyes, and at the end of the day, it's fine. Like, it's, a, it's fine, it's not, a, it's not a bad movie, it's fine. Now, here's the problem, though. It didn't have to be fine. Because one of my fears, one of the things I was walking into nervously, was I had a fear that Disney would pull a bad guys in the beginning, good guys in the sequel bit, like they did with Maleficent. Now, I know what you're saying, but Maleficent's not a sequel, it's a prequel, and it's in live action. N just bear with me. You have Sleeping Beauty... You have Maleficent as a character, and she's the mistress of evil. And then you have the Angelina Jolie movie, and she's the good guy, and she gets to save everybody. <laughs> if you're going to be called Maleficent, and you're a villain, you ain't no superhero. You're not a hero. You're the villain. I don't care. I don't care how much Angelina Jolie pay or gets paid. I don't care that she has all these awards and all that. She's playing this one character. It's the villain. That's like when Tom Cruise was in a movie called The Mummy and it somehow got wrapped up into 
it wrapped up. It got turned into how he's the most important character in the movie and everything has to be about him. It's like, your priorities are out of whack. And my fear was that when they made a Hocus Pocus 2, the Sandersons would be the good guys and they would be stopping another witch. It's like, no. No, they're evil. In the first movie, they kill children. They poison children. They eat their souls. Thankfully, spoiler alert, from here on in, guys, five minutes in, spoiler alert, do not watch if you're not interested. If you do not want the movie spoiled, five minutes in, don't 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 move past here. Okay. They, they actually, they do try to take the souls, but then they try to do this other thing, which I thought, okay, that's cool. They're not going to just take souls again. They're like, no, that's a dumb plan. Let's not do that. Let's become super duper witches. And I'm like, okay, fine. That's fine. The, the ending is that the Mary and Sarah witches get evaporated because if you become a super witch, you have to sacrifice everything you love and a witch's greatest love is her coven and Okay, I get it. That's cute. I still would have preferred it if the villains got defeated. Like, they're villains. But that's not what they're going for in this movie. And I get it. Okay. This movie has flaws. And one of the biggest flaws for me is that the movie wastes a lot of time on stuff it doesn't need. And it is filled of stuff it doesn't require. And my first big problem is that the movie has a trio of young girl characters. One of them is in the beginning of the movie for like five minutes, and then she appears occasionally in the background, and she doesn't do anything. Like, at all. Like, this one character named Cassie, she is not necessary. She could be replaced. If you've ever seen The Nostalgia Critic, he makes a joke about his... his he, he makes a joke about the remake of It how one of the characters could basically be replaced by a cardboard standout because he's that unnecessary. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a cardboard cutout of a character. Cassie is not important. She doesn't do anything. She's not interesting. She has nothing to say. She has a hot boyfriend, and that's it. Like, whatever. Who cares? And then you have the other two main witch girls. You have Becca and you have Izzy. Why not just make it a, a, a pair? Just make it two characters who are important. If you really have to make Cassie an important character, you make it where Cassie's the new kid in town and you have to introduce her or it has to be something where you're building up to it. If all you're going to do is just have one character off camera because they're having a fight and they don't want to be around each other and there's this big stupid social problem. That's dumb. It's dumb. It is a waste of an actor's time. It is a waste of screenwriting and it's a waste of time in general. It's dumb. It is dumb. Okay. And the other thing is that for a movie that's, that's taking place on Halloween... It doesn't feel that Halloweeny. Like, okay, there are there's like kids trick or treating in the beginning of the movie. There is a costume contest, and then there's like this outdoor festival where kids eat food. You could have you could have made it so that it was like an outdoor festival, or like an autumn festival, or like some random day. It doesn't it doesn't feel like Halloween. You watch that first movie. There are kids trick or treating. It's, it's night out, it's chilly, like, you can feel the atmosphere. The atmosphere is present in that first movie. It works. The second thing that, the, the third thing that doesn't work, so, because we got the kids, we got the atmosphere, the third thing that doesn't work for me in this movie, and this is just me, they, they take too much time with the Sandersons. Like, I get what they're doing. But if you're making the Sandersons the main characters, there's not enough time to develop on the kid characters. They don't have an... You don't really get to know much about them. Like, other than the fact that Becca is... Spoilers. Again, spoilers. 
other than Becca is a witch and Izzy is kind of like the smart girl, you don't really know them. You don't really know anything about them. You get to know more about Tony Hale, who, by the way, bravo, Disney, for getting Tony Hale. That's a brilliant idea. I love that. If you love Arrested Development, if you love uh, Veep like I do, getting Tony Hale, good job. Um, that, that's, that's actually a brilliant idea. I like Tony Hale. Um, but the fact that the movie relies so heavily on this, this prologue that takes place in, uh, Puritan, Massachusetts, I don't know. It just feels kind of weird. And they, they have this, um, they have this like elderly or, or matronly witch character they meet in the woods and you, you see like this, this crow that's supposed to be her, but they, there's nothing that has, she, she's not involved after the prologue. Like it never comes back to that. So again, it's, it's a waste of an idea where it's like, okay, we set this up and then we do nothing with it. it, it, it you, you can tell that, that certain ideas were not fully fleshed out because it just doesn't feel like there's much of an idea. Like, like they take certain things and they play with it. The the three main leads, uh, Bette Midler, Kathy Najimy, and Sarah Jessica Parker, they're great. Like, they still work as the Sanderson sisters. If anything, you'd almost want them to just have a movie of them just running amok through the entire movie. If you want to make them the protagonist, make them the protagonist and let them cause havoc. If you're just going to have them play around in a Walgreens, like, what? And then they they go after the mayor in his in his town. Like they keep cutting back and forth, and they keep they they can't really focus on what they want to do, and it's frustrating because you can tell that the screenwriters want to focus on the kids, but you know that the real focus, the real draw of the movie is on the Sandersons, and it's like they're they're fighting with each other for screen time. Um. And they do callbacks. They do, oh my god, they do a lot of callbacks to the first movie in the first ten minutes. Like, you find out the origin of the, the amuck, 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 or that uh, Sarah like why Sarah likes to eat spiders, and all these little things, and it's like, oh my god, guys, you're killing me with this. Stop it. Not everything needs an origin story. It's, it's almost as bad as when I saw Kevin Smith's Jay and Silent Bob rebooted. And he couldn't stop talking about mall rats for five minutes. Like, I get it. I get what you're saying. But you are really testing my patience. Thankfully, after the prologue, they more or less stop with all the callback jokes. Like, there's a really nice one about why the guy who runs the magic shop in the Sanderson's home, why he's doing what he does. Like, that's kind of cool. I like that. That's a neat idea. Um... But anyway, let's let's go ahead and wrap this up, because uh, I don't want to. Because I, I think I think at this point we're about done. Um, overall, is this a bad movie? No, it's not a bad movie. There are some good jokes. Uh, the directing is way way more artistic than the first movie. Like this movie looks cool. There's some really nice shots. There's some drone shots in here. They do some really nice angles and lighting. Like this movie has some thought put into it in terms of staging um is there are there problems with the script yes is there problems with the acting no i think that for the most part everyone's doing a top-notch job again tony hale steals the movie as this this really dorky mayor but he's really sweet and charming like it, it, it's it's great like it's great i i love that tony hale's in it and he's not the villain he's just the guy like it's funny it's funny to have him in that and i, I bless you casting director bravo you get my praise um for for mega fans of the move for the franchise um for mega fans i would say you're gonna like this you're gonna like this a way a lot more than i will um elizabeth liked this more than i did but she's been watching this for years like, she's a huge fan. Me, I will probably watch this one more time, maybe, like, 
every once in a while. Would I see this every year? No, I would not. This is not going on my um, Halloween rotation. It's, you know, there, there are better uh, family-friendly uh, Halloween movies to watch with your kids, to watch with your family. Uh, Coraline comes to mind. Uh, scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Um, what else? You know, they're, they're, they're better. They're better ones. Uh, the Halloween tree. If you can track down the Halloween tree, that's a, that's a must. But for me, I don't know. I just, it, it, it does so many poor things that I feel like it's not, it's not as strong as it could have been, you know? Um, okay. And I'll give you my final, and I'll give you my grade. If I were to grade this like I was still teaching, which I'm not. Um, if I were to grade this, I'd give this a B. It's strong enough to recommend for casual viewers and for mega for mega fans. But is this something you have to go rush out and see right away? Well, first of all, it's on streaming, so you're welcome. Second of all, if if you were to if Disney put this out on home video, wait until it drops for sale. Like I I picked this up for maybe like five dollars, not twenty. All right. So anyway, um, that's gonna do it for today. Um, drop it in the comments if you want me to do another Halloween or horror themed movie, and uh, we'll catch you later. All right. Bye guys.